Here is a small look at the man through the eyes of his contemporaries of those who understood him best. Here are 10 quotes from his fellow physicists about Albert Einstein. 1. Louis de Broglie. From his book New Perspectives in Physics, de Broglie says, I was particularly won over by his sweet disposition, by his general kindness, by his simplicity, and by his friendliness. Occasionally, gaiety would gain the upper hand and he would strike a more personal note and even disclose some detail of his day-to-day -day life. And again, reverting to his characteristic mood of reflection and meditation, he would launch into a profound and original discussion of a variety of scientific and other problems. I shall always remember the enchantment of those meetings, from which I carried away an indelible impression of Einstein's great human qualities. 2. Freeman Dyson. In 2008, Freeman said, Einstein was not a mathematician, but a physicist who had mixed feelings about mathematics. He had enormous respect for the power of mathematics to describe the workings of nature, and he had an instinct for mathematical beauty. On the other hand, he had no interest in pure mathematics. He had no technical skill as a mathematician. In his later years, he hired younger colleagues, assistants, to do mathematical calculations for him. His way of thinking was physical rather than mathematical. He was supreme among physicists as a bird who saw further than others. 3. Richard Feynman As quoted in Collective Electrodynamics Quantum Foundations of Electromagnetism, 2002, Feynman says, Einstein was a giant. His head was in the clouds, but his feet were on the ground. Those of us who are not so tall have to choose. 4. Robert J. Oppenheimer Oppenheimer in On Albert Einstein from the New York Review of Books said, Einstein is also, I think, rightly known as a man of very great goodwill and humanity. Indeed, if I had to think of a single word for his attitude towards human problems, I would pick the Sanskrit word ahimsa, not to hurt harmlessness. 5. Max Planck In a 1913 letter of recommendation for Einstein's membership into the Prussian Academy of Sciences in 1913, he says, Summing up, we may say that there is hardly one among the great problems in which modern physics is so rich to which Einstein has not made an important contribution that he may sometimes have missed the target in speculations as, for example, in his hypothesis of light quanta, cannot really be held too much against him, for it is not possible to introduce fundamentally new ideas, even in the most exact sciences, without occasionally taking risks. 6. Wolfgang Pauli Pauli, in statements after the 1927 Solvay Conference, as quoted in Physics and Beyond by Heisenberg, says... I cannot really endorse Planck's philosophy, even if it is logically valid and even though I respect the human attitudes to which it gives rise. Einstein's conception is closer to mine. His God is somehow involved in the immutable laws of nature. Einstein has a feeling for the central order of things. He can detect it in the simplicity of natural laws. We may take it that he felt this simplicity very strongly and directly during his discovery of the theory of relativity. Admittedly, this is a far cry from the contents of religion. I don't believe Einstein is tied to any religious tradition, and I rather think the idea of a personal God is entirely foreign to him. But as far as he is concerned, there is no split between science and religion. The central order is part of the subjective as well as the objective realm, and this strikes me as being a far better starting point. 7. Eugene Wigner From the recollections of Eugene P. Wigner, written in 1992, Einstein was a world-famous genius, and people I knew used to remark, you spend a good deal of time with Einstein. He has a perfect brain, doesn't he? Well, I have never known what is meant by a perfect brain. I do know that Einstein's mind was very human and had many defects. Einstein was far slower than Janssi von Neumann to derive mathematical identities. His memory could be faulty, at least after 1933, and he was hardly interested in the details of physics. For a man like Edward Teller, developing the details of a physics problem was passionately important, 
For Einstein, it was not. In all spheres of life, Einstein's greatest pleasure was in finding and later expressing basic principles. But Einstein's understanding was deeper than even Janzi von Neumann's. His mind was both more penetrating and more original than von Neumann. And that is a very remarkable statement. Einstein took an extraordinary pleasure in invention. Two of his greatest inventions are the special and the general theories of relativity. And for all of Janzi's brilliance, he never produced anything so original. No modern physicist has. 8. Paul Dirac A quote from Dirac about Einstein in 1979, he wasn't merely trying to construct theories to agree with observation. So many people do that. Einstein worked quite differently. He tried to imagine, if I were God, would I have made the world like this? And according to the answer to that question, he would decide on whether he liked a particular theory or not. 9. Werner Heisenberg Recounting one of his first encounters with Einstein in his book by the same name, Heisenberg recalls the story of one of Einstein's disagreements with the new quantum theory. For the first time, therefore, I now had an opportunity to talk with Einstein himself. On the way home, he questioned me about my background, my studies with Sommerfeld, but on arrival, he at once began with a central question about the philosophical foundation of the new quantum mechanics. He pointed out to me that in my mathematical description, the notion of electron path did not occur at all. But in a cloud chamber, the track of the electron can, of course, be observed directly. It seemed to him absurd to claim that there was indeed an electron path in the cloud chamber, but none in the interior of the atom. The notion of a path could not be dependent, after all, on the size of the space in which the electron's movements were occurring. I defended myself to begin with by justifying in detail the necessity for abandoning the path concept with the interior of an atom. I pointed out that we cannot, in fact, observe such a path. What we actually record are frequencies of the light radiated by the atom, intensities, and the transition probabilities, but no actual path. And since it is but rational to introduce into a theory only such quantities as can be directly observed, the concept of electron paths ought not, in fact, to figure in the theory. To my astonishment, Einstein was not at all satisfied with this argument. He thought that every theory in fact contains unobservable quantities. 10. Niels Bohr And a final quote from Bohr upon the passing of his good friend Einstein in 1955. The same spirit that characterized Einstein's unique scientific achievements also marked his attitude in all human relations. Notwithstanding the increasing reverence which people everywhere felt for his attainments and character, he behaved with unchanging natural modesty and expressed himself with a subtle and charming humor. He was always prepared to help people in difficulties of any kind, and to him, who himself had experienced the evils of racial prejudice, the promotion of understanding among nations was a foremost endeavor. His earnest admonitions on the responsibility involved in a rapidly growing mastery of the forces of nature will surely help to meet the challenge to civilization in the proper spirit. To the whole of mankind, Albert Einstein's death is a great loss, and to those of us who had the good fortune to enjoy his warm friendship, it is a grief that we shall never more be able to see his gentle smile and to listen to him, but the memories he has left behind will remain an ever-living source of fortitude and encouragement.